Okay, so I'm just reviewing this new thermal camera that HFS Tools sent me. And I'm going to be testing out... We have, we've been trying to solve leaking issues in this building up here, so... Let's see if we can find leaks. I want to warn you guys that I am quite a thermal camera snob. And in fact, in this video, we're going to be talking about a lot of the various differences between these models that I'm reviewing. And earlier today, I was filming a video about this carbon monoxide meter I really like. And I got an email I saw on my phone. Like, oh, could you get the video by Black Friday? It's like, fine, I'll film another video. I've already been messing with these cameras. I'll film the video. Well, the first one that came was this Kiwi's one. I plugged it into my computer and my Windows Defender and Malwarebytes went crazy. Clearly this is not gonna be a simple video because this has something on it from the factory. So I was like, well, that's gonna be a longer video. And then I realized, oh, it was the second company that asked me to do it by Black Friday. Okay, well, well well, you guys lucked out because your your thing didn't come with viruses on it. Now, I do want your opinion. Are these viruses, rootkits, are these false alarms? Because I don't want to misrepresent in the video. And please check in the comments so if somebody says, oh, this is just something that always gets detected, or is it really a legitimate... It shouldn't be having multiple things as soon as you plug it in. That's not normal. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the HSF Tools HP96, and does it make sense? Because, well, again, I'm a thermal camera snob, and we have, I'm not even gonna compare against the $2,000 thermal cameras I have from years ago, or, or the, the Adema or FLIR systems I have. We have, for reference, the top on that the TC004, now there's the TC004 light that has less features. That's like $400 on average. And now it's down to 285 on Black Friday, but has high resolution and high frame rate. The one that has the viruses or whatever on it, it's cheaper, has same resolution, but like six FPS. Well, what do you get with an even cheaper one? This one, is down to a hundred ninety dollars and i will say i do feel like it's a little bit too soon for me to do a review of this so again this is not like the other this is not like my multimeter where i've used it for three months and i love it this it has found its way into my pocket but it's only 96 by 96 resolution i've used it quite a few times in the local buildings like for instance it just happened to be that this one became my hvac experimentation camera and then this one became my looking around buildings for leaks camera and it does have an optical op optical camera with it see back in the day with whenever they had the FLIR one that only had the 80 by 80 image sensor I hated it because they always put those in there and they coupled it with like a 320 by 240 visible light camera. And then they would do this where you can, oh, you can take the image and combine it, which I'm never really a fan of. For this, it's maybe useful. I'd rather just be seeing vision only because you might see artifacts that aren't really noticeable uh, in thermal. It can, it can lead you astray in a way. Now this is actually kind of interesting. You can see it zoomed in. Oh, it zooms in the thermal. Oh, never mind. that's not that cool. It is a competently simple tool. It's one of those things where it's like a wrench. Do you really want to have a $600 wrench? Maybe, but not as your everyday wrench. This is a case where, you know, I'm a real snob when it comes to, th to thermal cameras. And so for me, I'm like, oh, you need to have the highest resolution. 
It does have good frame rate though. And the other thing too is it turns on pretty fast. So let's turn on, we have the top down, the Kai Weeks, and the HSF tools. So that's the first image. That's the first image of that. Now these seem to be in a state where, oh, now we have the first image from that. This one, it's been really slow. This, anytime I've been doing building work, it has actually, I haven't been waiting for it to turn on because I'll be walking up some steps or whatever and I'll turn it on. And then while I'm holding it, it's turning on, then I'll be, I'll situate myself. I would not use this for electronics repair because anytime I pull it out and have to turn it on, I'm just waiting and waiting for it to turn on. It feels like forever. However, this is not good for doing a YouTube video with. You know, I, I really wouldn't go below 256 by 192 for a YouTube video because 96 by 96 is just too crunchy. And so this is definitely in tool territory, but you know, a lot of people would only be using it as a tool. So I probably won't be showing it too much in videos of like doing cool things. That's kind of neat. Oh yeah, I'm still writing that thing. Um, but it, it'll just be behind the scenes, but I might give it away actually, because here's the other thing. The reason why I'm accepting so many of these reviews for thermal cameras is because there's a there's actually a surprising number of contractors and roof repairers and people in the area who don't realize that you can use thermal cameras to detect water, at least, at least when the water is evaporating. And so I'm thinking I'm probably going to gift these to a few people that are like, no, really, you need to have this in your toolkit. You really, really need that. And... So yeah, I push, I'm push. i pushing this review out earlier because they really want it. And you know, now I got the video out. This is just a tool. It's not super exciting, not to be rude or anything, um, it, but it's, it seems reliable and I have been using it. See, that's the, that's the funny disparity where I do like that it just fits in my pocket and it does record at like 30 FPS. So the clarity is really good as opposed to the other one where it's like six fps yeah like that then we have this one which i would say is 25 to 30 fps a little bit more rolling shutter This one seems to have a higher clarity between um, temperatures. This one has lower clarity between temperatures. I think it has to do with fewer pixels. I really think that's just all it is because it just smooths out the image a bit more. And uh, they do have this setting. Let's see, so we have temperature measurement settings. They have super resolution, which is like a, it's like a setting they have. It kind of, it makes it kind of look like it went through chat GPT though. Uh, that's, no, I think. Let's see. That's the thing. I do like it for its simplicity. I'm not being dishonest when I say that I like it for, for its simplicity. I'm glad that I have it. I don't really need it because I have a whole lot of thermal cameras, but since I have it, I am finding myself using it because it'll fit in my work pocket. Now, I don't trust it to be very, um, 
rugged, if that makes any sense. I'm thinking it probably is gonna, it's probably gonna um, wear through fairly quickly, especially the screen. If there's a screw or something in your pocket. So I don't know. I'm a, I feel a little bit bad for doing a video so rushed with this because, um, you know, a lot of you guys have bought that multimeter that I did a review of. And a couple of you guys have also bought this top test uh, carbon monoxide meter. And it makes me feel glad. I'm like, okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm just glad you guys didn't buy some of the stuff that I reviewed that is bad. So I'm glad I communicate well enough. Um, nothing about this jumps out except for the price. Build quality is fine. I'm using it fine. I do like that I have access to it, but the, the thermal camera snob side of me just makes me feel like, oh, I can't recommend it, especially only after like two weeks of using it. And well, I guess we should actually talk about how thermal cameras handle keyframes. Because that's the other thing too that really muddies the water. This thermal camera records 30 FPS really well. All three of these thermal cameras though, every second or so they have to have a shutter come down in front of the, the uh, image sensor to help it calibrate. Because when the shutter comes down, then it knows, oh, every pixel should be black. So we can calibrate off of that reference and then it opens back up. Well, how the system handles it when those keyframes are dropped is different. This one, whenever that shutter comes down, it just stops the video feed to the video source or whatever, and the the video clips just end up getting so garbled for half a second. And um, it really, it's not like, like data moshing in a way. This one, I've, I haven't noticed any real issues with, and this one I haven't noticed any issues with either. It just, the, uh, the video freezes for a split second and then continues, but I haven't noticed any of that issue that this one had of just like the, it being an absolutely weird mess of, uh, of random pixels. The fact that this records at 30 FPS probably indicates that a lot of these image sensors could handle... Um, actually, I'm going to record right now. They probably could handle recording 30 FPS. This one obviously goes down below 9 FPS probably because it doesn't have the, the capacity for it. That's why it takes so long to turn on. But also it gets past what the ITAR regulations or whatever, where you can't export super high frame rate, super high frame rate thermal cameras outside of the US. So any ones of these that they ship to the US, they can't move out of the US. And because uh, they could technically be used to make missiles, even though these would be really terrible guidance systems. And yeah, today wasn't a day to make videos, but guess what? I just did a review of a video, of, of a tool, and I get to keep it now. So they asked and they received. Well, here is the past week or two that I've been messing around with using this just in my day-to-day -day work. You know, I feel like I've kind of... Uh, really taking advantage of the situation because I just got a, a tool that I can kind of toss around, but eh, maybe that's not a bad thing. <sighs> Recording succeeded. That's pretty much it though.
the stairs to go up. Because the third floor has been having leaking issues. I really hope we can get these water ingress issues down. There's almost no point in fixing the building if we can't get the water to stop coming in, you know? But I don't see any right now. And it was raining quite a lot last night, so I wonder if, again, the work we've done has helped. By the way, I just want to say that I like that this thing comes in a little pouch. These all do, but most of them are like over the arm pouch. I like that this one is designed for the belt. Like I don't want to overtly recommend this thing, but if you're already looking at it, okay, I, I can see why you're looking at it. Now that I have it in my hand, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a cheaper tool than one of those and it's more compact. I like the form factor. My friend, Gabe, who runs the channel Saver for Parts, he has one kind of like this, and I thought it was an interesting form factor. 